day one of the, of the proper official tour. You've seen a, a bit of our trip. Uh, official trip. You've seen some uh, Nashville stuff happening, but this is where the work gets done. <laughs> Welcome home, brother. Welcome home. This is, uh, this is uh, how are you? Good. Luke. And you are Luke. Luke. I'm Tom. Tom okay. Tom. And Luke does what? He does uh, the video videography. Vlog. Oh, he's with you. He's yeah. with you. Good friend of mine, always looks after us whenever we're in town. He does a, does a great job for Gibson and um, yeah, what can I say? The man's a, the man's a true legend, so <laughs> I mean thank it. Thank you, I mean it's thank you, thank so. you. Um, he's going to give us, uh, yeah, the money. where's the money? Where's the money? I don't know. It's right in the back pocket. Somewhere, yeah. So anyway, Tom's going to give us a, a tour around of um, what happens at Gibson Custom, the whole process, etc, etc. So uh, over to you, my man. Okay, we're standing in. The wood mill, rough mill, mill room, call it whatever you want. Um, this is where we store all of our raw wood, all of our raw materials for building guitars. Um, without going pallet to pallet, we have maple for the tops, we have mahogany for backs, we have mahogany one piece necks on the rack over the left, we have uh, five ply curly maple necks for the carved top for the arch top guitars. Um, we have a lot of wood. Yeah, incredible so, stuff. Yeah, and um, the maple tops are graded by the type of top we would use for 58 yeah. Les Paul, for 59 and 60 Les Pauls, uh, also for the what I call the non historic figure tops like the Access, the 336. And then occasionally we'll have really nice uh, stock of quilts. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, quilt just doesn't grow no, on trees no, no. as much as no, the curly like, maple. Yeah. So, and we have two different grades of quilts. Yeah. So, um, very, very popular for like a custom Les Paul yeah. custom. Um, sometimes on a reissue 59, but most 59 owners it's like, like to have it, just it like Mondo flame. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then uh, even our mahogany backs are, well, let me back up. Uh, we use, we have one major wood vendor uh, for a lot of our maple tops. Uh, we have a couple other guys that find amazing type of wood, mm. like, you know, the books yeah. of raw wood that have incredible flame. And uh, on the, so it's known that we have different grades of maple because customers and dealers can see it yeah. on the guitar. But we do the same with mahogany backs. Um, we just don't get mahogany wood and have them cut to the Les Paul backs and there you go. We actually, our, our supplier weighs them and separates them from what yeah. medium weight, yeah, so sometimes heavy. Um, stuff for like a custom and, and things like that. Yeah, yeah. But, but also what we call ultralight and yeah. you know, costs a little bit extra to us, so it's a little bit more expensive on the guitar, but... It's a popular option, isn't it? Yes, and it's very hard because they're one-piece yeah. mahogany backs. Mm. Um, if it was two or three pieces, yeah. which we don't do no. on any guitar, no. not just historics, but on the modern models. So, and we don't have to chamber the guitar. No, it's so, no, a good way, aren't yeah, they? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's very common, but again, it is a little bit extra charge because um, it's hard to source. Sure. Okay. It's got like a moustache here. Yeah. It's, still, it's almost there, but it's not quite right. <laughs>
Okay, we have weekly production schedules, and once they have a work order to see what order numbers or what models are going into the press, the production press for this week, uh, they will pull those tops and the backs. Uh, they've already done today's press, this first half of today's press, but um, they will roll their table out and they'll lay the maple top down, the, the underside, and get a, like a big paint roller with a paint tray yeah. full of hide glue. Yeah. And they'll just roll it on and then, you know, glue the top, obviously making sure all centers are equal. Place it in the press over here. It's about a four hour drying time under it's like 2,000 pounds of, of pressure. Yeah. Just holding the top to the body. You can see have, they have like fiber spacers in between just to make, I'm not sure why, but it looks good. It's there for a reason. I think it's for this video. Yeah. yeah. So um, on the end, we make sure that, John, when you have a custom orders, hand-picked tops, which yeah. you do yeah, often, yeah. Um, we write, you might come around here, we write the order number on the edge of the maple top, and we match it with the proper mahogany back. Now, it's upside down now, but that tells us that that number will move on through the factory. Um, once they trim, the maple top to be the shape of the Les Paul, they'll make sure that number stays on that body somewhere. So it's tracked all the way through to final assembly. So the next step, after it comes out of the press and they trim the maple, so these bodies are probably from yesterday's press. Yeah. Okay? And this machine will do the back two bodies, as you can see, it's carved in the top. It's also on the front two bodies that are face down. It does all the control cavity routing and the toggle routing. Uh, this machine will also do one part of the uh, channel yeah. that the binding will be on. Uh, okay. The part in the cutaway where you have the maple reveal yeah. up in the yeah, cutaway, yeah. because because it has an arch in the top. Um, it's programmed to do that here. Yeah. Now the rest of that channel route will be done manually yeah. over here. I wasn't able to pull a body that's not been carved. No. You can sort of see the one upside yeah, down, yeah. the two, okay. But once it comes out of the machine, it's been routed, it's been channel control cavity routed, toggle routed. Even the precise depth of the back plate. Yeah. That is, we actually um, honor and respect the original depth measurement of this back plate yeah. cavity in there. Okay? So, so this is first pass right off the machine. Um, don't know if you can catch it on video, but it's still rough. It's there, quite yeah. corrugated. Like textured, yeah. Yeah, textured. Um, and, but you can already, of course, pretty tough on the hand, but you can already feel, this is a 59, you can already feel like the recarve, yeah. meaning this is the highly respected dish, yeah, is, yeah. but the edge has a recarve, that's yeah. very important. So, um, so this will move on, as you can see, oh, I know what I'm looking at, and this is great to keep on your video. Um, this is a double carve, okay? Meaning, it was already carved and channel routed. Yeah. Then manually, with the with the pin router, yeah. they finished the other routing. They bound it, and it's in this rack to go back and now get about a 15-minute slow yeah. carving to where it's as smooth as sanding. Okay. All, all done by loaded in specs from 200 or more original burst yeah. carving. Yeah. Okay. So that's why it already has binding. Cool. If you think about binding, its sole purpose is beauty. Yeah. Because it really doesn't make it sound better, feel better, Not. or but it makes it look better. I got it.
they're looking. Okay. The machine that carves the tops also does uh, much more accurate perimeter shaping. Um, we're very particular that the body shape and the waist and the shoulders are precise specs. But now this is the next step for smoothing. Prior to later in the process where it's actually hand sanded. Okay. So now he'll be doing the cutting the rabbiting channel for the binding. getting everything uh, squared right down to, to you know, 
the, the finest right. detail. Right. Uh, we imaginable. we collect the data and, and and add it to the average of the spec for right. everything. Yeah. yeah, try to make yeah. it as historically accurate as possible. Cool. Thanks, man. Yeah, thank you. The final one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Shall we rock and roll? Okay. Oh. Okay. All right. So now when we go to the neck, the other half of the guitar. One piece quarter sawn mahogany neck. All right. Before the wing blocks. And what are the wing blocks? I'll show you that in just a couple minutes. Um, so we have this neck. Now we turn over here. So here's the raw neck. And depending on the mahogany shade and color, these are a lot of wing blocks, okay? And in matched pairs, it's like children's building blocks, okay? Assuming these are the proper wing blocks for this neck based on color, and that looks pretty good. Simply we'll glue it, okay, with like white glue, okay? And if you turn around, they will actually go into the press. So this, this is for real. They'll crank this down and clamp it. They'll fill up this whole row and lift this old machine up and fill up the next row that's down there until it's all full. And usually the first row that you did is ready to come out. So. How old are these machines? Uh, does it say? Kind of an interesting name on the machine, don't you think? Uh, really old, <laughs> older than us. Similar to the body carver, this is doing rough carving of the shape of the neck, okay? And how much wood is removed is standard on all necks. The, the thickness or the thinness of the neck for a particular model happens later in hand rolling. Yeah. Okay? Alright. So, this also cuts the truss rod channel, shapes the back of the neck, and does a bit of the headstock shaping. I'm a little ahead of myself, but if you notice on this neck, you can see it better on the back, we, add, we glue wing blocks to that raw neck I showed you always been Gibson's tradition and that's so that we can actually create the Gibson headstock shape and on this machine it shapes the neck it cuts the truss rod slot and it does a very rough carving of the beginnings of the Gibson headstock shape so this has been removed to this so the neck has been rolled the neck has been rolled The wing blocks have been attached. The headstock is still almost there. Still not the cleft yet, okay? The heel's starting to get carved. We still have to actually cut it for the neck tenon, okay? Which I hope to find one already in that step. Um, it had the truss rod slot installed. These gentlemen are actually installing the trusses. This is the historic reissue truss rod. So um, a few years ago, we had the opportunity to help an, a collector who wanted us to work on his 58. And in order to fix the neck, it had twisted. You know, we were, you can remove the fingerboard, which we did. And he gave us permission to have the original truss re-engineered. It was a lot, of, a lot of analysis, a lot of laboratory research, and then samples so that we could basically duplicated. Um, for the last 40 years, when Gibson went to more modern, more efficient specs, until we turned back to this original spec, um, the older anchor was smaller, uh, the moon washer, um, and consumers won't see this in the guitar, but it's another part of our commitment to historic accuracy. Even the things you don't see or you weren't aware of, you know, it's, it's being honest and ethical to the brand. So once the truss is installed, 
Okay, so you see the, the nut. He's gluing in a maple spline, which will hold the truss rod in, and it's perforated spline, so the glue doesn't slide down in and glue to the truss rod, okay? The old clamp. My baby. Yeah. Be glued for. I'll ask him. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Hey man, yeah. I'm Tom by the way. Oh, Trevor. Trevor, nice to see you. Hey, Thank how you. long is that going to be? I work here. How long is that stay before they? You'd have to take it apart and move it on. Minutes. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Forty-five. Great. Unless you. Yeah. Try to break the wings off. No. Yeah. 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 Well, it's not under any pressure, is it? The uh, really when it's. Um... No. 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 No, and I and I think the what do you call it the bed the web the wedge bevel yeah. on the rim pretty fascinating though because you don't see that would that be high glue that he's using there for that one or uh, probably not I can ask him that too okay Are you using high glue oh yeah you're yeah, using yeah, yeah. yeah I can tell by the the glue pot yeah yeah you know what we say. As it should be. Yeah. Yeah. You, you just do what you're doing so you keep getting your production. Uh, the gentleman is the lead neck fitter. And um, what he was, this is where the department where the body and neck become a guitar. From yeah. this point on, we count them as guitars, not as bodies and neck. Um, he's working on a reissue, Les okay, Paul, yeah. clearly a 59, 59. Yeah. and at this stage, the neck tenon, the neck route and the body are so precisely cut and engineered got in. that um, he really has to do just minor tweaks, yeah. okay? So a little bit of modern engineering is a yeah. good thing to make sure that there's two important parts here. The pitch of the neck has to be the accurate low, you know, we have a very low neck pitch, and the alignment. Yeah. So. Chances of that. I don't know. Getting it caught on camera yeah. as well. Maybe your experience. With our engineering and machinery that we handle, the pitches are really good. They're, they're going to be right on. Whereas you get the models like SGs, 335s, of course, car tops. It's a lot more work to get it to that point. Y'all yeah. just watch me. This takes about five minutes. Yeah. You know, the entire process for a less call about 10 minutes for next bit. About an hour for a car top. Is it? So he's using high glue. We're back to the old high glue.
does that sit before you take the clamp off and it's good to 45 go? 45 minutes clamp on. Okay. Longer to cure, but it can go yeah. ahead and be used and work on the machinery and pickup routing, oscillate and spin the sand. Great. It's a nice flame top. Nice fingerboard. Yeah. Nice yeah. fingerboard, dude. Yeah. yeah. Uh, All right. That's the Bolivian. Is it? I'm sorry? Bolivian uh, yeah. rosewood. Oh. Yeah. Yellow yeah. that. Had some Brazilian earlier and then. Mm -hmm. Flex machines, every custom shop instrument that we do gets the flex process. It's basically um, an automated fret leveling, fret crowning uh, process that the purpose that we acquired these over 10 years ago yeah. was to improve out of the box playability. Yeah. Simple as that. Um, now, pretty much the whole industry uses yeah. flex which it's great for all customers because it actually makes all guitars over the last uh, 10 years. Idea. Yeah. So uh, our machine is, it was customized to put, uh, uh, when, they, when they put the bracket on the headstock and lock the guitar in the machine, before it starts to scan the fingerboard to take measurements of the frets at each place where the string crosses, yeah. Um, they flip the switch and it puts, it pulls on the neck. Yeah, it gives you the tension. Uh, equal to having a yeah. set of tens on yeah. it. Just like the original carving machine, uh, the Fadal machine, those are programmed to cut cavities to shape the top and the perimeter based on original specs that we've accumulated over our 25 yeah. years. Well, now you have humans sanding instruments, but they have to know exactly what the bevel degree should be, you know, not 290 degrees sharp, not 245 no. degree flat. And, uh, and we, we have people that check those specs. Okay. It doesn't seem like a big deal, but it is to oh, us. Yeah. But if, it's, if we accept it as accurate to our original specs, then we hope the customer will too. Oh, yeah. like a mess if he dares to pan across there but it's like painting a concrete yeah. block Americans love this. Oh, that smell. That's the smell. 
can't capture that on camera. Yeah, yeah. are you capturing that smell on camera? Smell. Okay. Um, this is finish area. Yeah. Now. Look at all this stuff. Fantastic. So when I was talking about the aniline dye, okay, this doesn't have final clear sealer on it yet. So you can still see, you can actually see the texture of the mahogany. All this red is, is stain and it seals the pores. It's not red paint. And um, that's one thing that really sets reissues apart from a lot of other guitars is it's actually three dimensional very rich. It's just for decoration. Yeah. Is that good in here? I think right. is it covered? Okay. Mm -hmm. 